Hi student, uh, today I want to continue the tutorial lesson, that's a 5.2, so hopefully you are finished it. So this one is the objective, question 1 until question 10. Okay, you can mark it now. After that, uh, you got any question, you can snap the photo and show me the question, then you ask. Okay, then we need to go, it's a question 11. Okay, let's see the question 11. Okay, there's a simple pendulum that consists with the bob. Okay, the mass is 40 gram. At the end of the light in the uh, elastic of the string. Okay, let's see the elastic of the string. The length is a 20 cm. Okay, now the pendulum that make 20 complete oscillation in 5 seconds. Okay, where they start? They start from the A. Okay, swing to the C and go back. So this one we count one of the complete oscillation. Okay, by using the letter A, B, C. So that means later you need to answer using the letter A, B, C only to state the equilibrium position. So the equilibrium position sure is the lowest part. So from here you answer equilibrium position there is a, okay, there's a position B. Okay, now they ask you what meaning of the periods. Okay, you no need to explain the definition because they say by using the letter. So using the letter, you go to explain what means of the periods. So we start from the A, then after that must end with the A also, is it? So you just mention A to B to C. After that, go back B and go back to the C. So we just write in the, uh, the short form. From A to C, after that back to the A. So this one we call complete oscillation. Okay, then we go to the second one. What is the frequency of the oscillation of the pendulum? So before that, we learn about the period. Is it period? Because they say 20 complete oscillation in 5 seconds. So if we find the period, we take the 5 seconds over 20. Is it? Okay, frequency and period is inversely proportional. So if you say period is, okay, so I write here. If you say the period, you say the period is okay using the red color period is using the 5 over 20 okay so frequency is opposite let me inversely proportional with the t so frequency should be 20 over the 5 20 over the 5 then this one we call frequency okay so i will show the answer here so i clear first Okay, clear all the calculation here. Okay, let's see the answer. Frequency is a 20 over 5. Okay, 20 complete oscillation over the time taken. Then then there's a 4 hertz. So what is the frequency of the oscillation of the pendulum when the bob of the mass 50? So that means they increase the mass of the bob. Actually got any related with the frequency or not? Okay, because your bob is a left and right, left and right to swing, is it? Okay, actually, that's not related with the frequency. Your frequency is still the same. So, your answer is unchanged. Okay, pendulum bob, you want to affect the time taken to oscillate. That's related with the line. Okay, not related with the mass. Okay, now D, they say what happened to the frequency? Okay, frequency. Uh the oscillation pendulum when the length become longer now the length become 80 cm so when 80 cm sure they take longer time to swing is it so longer time mean frequency smaller or bigger okay the answer longer time that mean the time longer the frequency must be t and v inversely proportional so your frequency will become smaller okay frequency becomes smaller means one second your frequency become very less they cannot vibrate so many times. So this one is the answer for frequency. Frequency decreases. Okay, E. After a while, pendulum stop to oscillate. Why they will stop to oscillate? Remember the the uh, the phenomena what we learn when they are stop slowly lie down then stop. So the process name we call it as a because of damping. Okay. Now they want you to draw displacement versus time pendulum to stop to oscillate. So you must draw the damping line when starting, the amplitude is higher. Then slowly, slowly, slowly smaller. After that becomes stop. So I will show here. Okay, so this one is a damping graph. Okay, can you see the amplitude keep smaller? 
can add the form of the energy when the pendulum at the B. So refer just now diagram. When B is what happened? B is an equilibrium position. Is it don't have any height? Is it? So they want just got one energy. There's a kinetic energy between B to C. B is a lowest part. C is a highest part. So between, so that means we got two type of the energy. There's a kinetic plus gravitational potential energy. Okay, then we go to the question 12. Okay, a student, they carry out the experiment to find out relationship between the mass and also the periods. Okay, using the jigsaw. Now the jigsaw blade, they climb into the end of the plasticine ball with the mass. Now they fix the other end of the is show in the diagram. One mass they clap with the table, another one with the plasticine ball. After that, the jigsaw blade is displayed horizontal to side after that release the oscillate. The 20 time oscillation, they're still using 20 time of oscillation. Then the time taken, taken by the stopwatch. Okay, let's see the table. When starting using the plasticine is 0.1 kg. Okay, the time taken to oscillate is a 20. So they get it, the first time taken is a 20 second. Okay, for 20 complete oscillation. Then they increase the mass. When the mass increase, so you find it, the time taken to oscillate will be increases. Okay, this one is a oscillation up and down. Different with the pendulum. The pendulum is a left and right. Actually, there's not affected by the mass. But you oscillate up and down, there will related with the mass because pulling down is a force pulling force the gravitational force so that means the mass that will affected when using the inertia to move up and down okay now the question they want you to fill in the table periods how to find the periods period means one second uh that means i'll give you uh okay not one second is one complete oscillation you take how many times Okay, the time taken how long? So example from the A, go to the B, go to the C, then go back to the A. So the time taken is how long? That one we call periods. So from here, how we do the calculation? So we just take 28 seconds over 20. Because 20 oscillation is 28 seconds, is it? So we just take 28 seconds over 20. So I want to find one complete oscillation is how long? So you do the calculation. So I show you the answer here. Make sure decimal point must be consistent. So when you do the calculation, you get it one decimal point. So everything must be one decimal point. Although it's a zero, then you need to put point zero. So I show you the answer. Okay, this one is the answer. 1.4, 2.0, 2.5, 2.8, 3.2, and 3.5. So that means I can make a conclusion when the mass increase, period also increase. Okay, the next one. Can you see T square? T square means capital T. So capital T is a period. So they take the period go to square. Okay, remember, don't forget the unit. When your period is a second, they go to square. The second also must be square. So now when you do the calculation, you can write about two decimal points. Okay, because this one is a calculation. So you take 1.4 go to square, then you get two decimal points. When you take two decimal points, that means the whole row must be two decimal point so we call consistent okay now i show you the answer 1.96 and then you see the four four although don't have anything behind you also need to put two decimal point there's a 4.00 okay the rest until 12.25 so this one is a table from the experiment so we do the calculation okay after this we see what they want Okay, so from here, I mentioned for you idea, uh, decimal point must be consistent. Okay, so from the table, we complete already. We see the question B. Okay, based on the graph paper, okay, you need to plot the graph T square against the mass. So T square against the mass, T square must be Y axis. Okay, this one must be the y-axis okay after that the mass must be the x-axis okay then after that we need to plot the graph so we need to see the x x is no problem because there's a consistent 0 0.1 until 0 0.6 okay t square 
the smallest is 1.96 the biggest is 12.25 so make sure the graph that can include all the number in uh, then we start from zero always start from zero so i show you the graph what i draw okay so this one is a graph first one you draw two axes okay measure first before you want to start to draw okay i draw the line then i set m first mass 0 0.1 until 0 0.6 okay so this one is a t square then sledge unit s square remember to write the symbol and unit okay you smaller is a 1.96 so i put 2 maximum is a 12.25 so here i until 14 so that means the scale here they can including all the readings after that you plot follow the reading here just mark it in the graph paper okay after mark it draw the line okay that means uh you depends which point you can touch it we never say you must touch all the point okay at least you touch one of the point then make sure up and down you cannot touch one the point must be balanced example here got six reading so if you cannot touch two that means you left four is it up must be two down must be two okay or sometimes you cannot touch about uh you just touch one only five you cannot touch so either three is up two is down it's okay you cannot say four is up one is down so that one we call unbalanced so remember when you draw the graph because scale uh, you must make sure there's a consistent okay now you're going to see pass through zero is it when they pass through zero now what is the relationship Okay, the graph relationship for the t square against the m is what so relationship that means you need to mention the terms the term is what directly proportional inversely proportional or increase linearly you cannot say when the mass increase t square also increase no that one not terms that one is the explanation so from here we just write t square directly proportional to the m I can mention directly proportional. Why? Because my graph they show they pass through zero. Okay, so we continue to the next one. Okay, this one is a graph I plot already. Okay, now you say determine the value of the m. They want to find the mass when the t equal 2.2. Okay, from our graph, we don't have any t. Agree or not? We just got t squared. So what you need to do, you take the 2.2. You go to square. Okay, take the 2.2, 2, we go to square. I find it 4.84. So now you take 4.84 from the graph. Okay, this one is what I can find. 4.84 is here. And I draw the line. Then I make the line cross about the x axis. Now I go to read. This one is what's the reading. Okay, so I get it. There's a 0 0.25 kg. So I just write the answer 0 0.25 kg. Okay, number two, T. They want to find about the T when the mass is 0 0.72. So also same, from your graph, you find 0 0.72. Okay, so I forget it here. Then you draw the line. Draw the straight line until they touch the line. Okay, touch the graph line. Then you draw the horizontal. Then they cut Y axis. Then you see where they cut it. Okay, so I show the first one. M 0 0.72. Okay, when t square, this one remember the t square, this one not t. So I draw the line, I find it that's a 14.6. Then you need to convert t square, convert become t. So you take the t square, you go to square root. Okay, after square root, I get it 3.821 second. Okay, make sure your answer here is a four significant figure. So 3.82, that means three only. So what for the scheme, because every time they change the scheme answer. So what you need to do, we want to make sure confirm. So we write in four significant figures. Okay. Okay, our lesson just until here. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Remember, objective, don't understand.